Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Cup of Joe. It's the 7th of July today, and I uh, thought we'd begin by just reading today's Gospel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. A demoniac who could not speak was brought to Jesus. And when the demon was driven out, the mute man spoke. <clears throat> the crowds were amazed and said, Nothing like this has ever been seen in Israel. But the Pharisees said, He drives out demons by the prince of demons. Jesus went all around, went around to all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them, because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. The Father in heaven today, as all the seminarians in our diocese are scattered around to different churches, as we have ourselves, Deacon Nicholas Wilson, here with us, we ask that you would bless them strengthen them, guide them, to prepare them well to be the laborers in the vineyard you call them to be. We pray that there would be many more young men who hear the voice of the Good Shepherd to desire to be shepherds with you and to guide your church as you would desire for them too, that holy families might be built up to build up strong young men and strong young women to know you and to love you, and to discern what your will is for their lives. And Father, we ask that you would send many out into your vineyard to labor in the vineyard where there are many who are in need of knowing you, and that many might be sent out to help them to know you. And we ask all this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Good Shepherd. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. So, today, I was looking at this, and this hit me many, many years ago, probably even before I was in seminary. I was thinking over the last couple of days, I've been doing, or over the last weeks, I've been doing quite a bit of moving. And I thought of, like, when you're moving books, especially, you need the bookends. You need the bookends to make sure all the books don't fall in everywhere. And, and I was thinking about bookends as I was thinking about today's gospel because this particular part of the gospel of Matthew I've always seen as a bookend and a beginning of something else. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you were to turn in the gospel of Matthew to chapter 4, verse 23, Chapter 4, 4, verse 23, you would hear something written that sounds a lot like this. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages in Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. That's chapter 4, verse 23, Gospel of Matthew. We just read in this gospel, in chapter 9, verse 35, these words. Jesus went around to all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. Now that's not happenstance that almost the same exact words are used by Matthew in that particular instance. Those words are the same words and they're supposed to be bookends. Now what are they supposed to be bookends of? Well, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 4, in that verse 23, Jesus begins his ministry. He's just come out of the desert. He's just left the desert, done his 40 days in the desert. Now he is called to go forward and to start doing the teaching and the preaching to the people, to show them the way, to show them how they're supposed to do what they're supposed to do. And so that's what he begins in chapter 4. And right after chap chapter 4, verse 23, well, chapter 5 starts, and we were talking about that. That's the Sermon on the Mount, chapter 5 through 7. So he's teaching and he's preaching and he's forming the people. He's telling them everything they need to, need to know. Then after chapter 7 and chapters 8 and 9, which we've been reading for the last couple of weeks, chapters 8 and 9, he's doing all kinds of miracles. So he's showing them, what is he doing? He's, he's, I, I love this and I'm reminded of this often. 
that methodology that I often like to use, you win, you build, you send. Well, it's not my methodology. It's Jesus' methodology. He wins them. He wins them over to his idea with that beginning in chapter 4, verse 23. He goes around doing all of these things. He's teaching them. He's forming them. He's preparing them. That's what he does for chapters 5 through 7. And then chapters 8 and 9, what does he do? He starts building them. He's doing that very thing. He's showing them, like, I have won you over now. You're following me. Those that want to follow me continue to follow me. He's mentoring them. He's showing them, look at the power that I have over the world. He's healing people. He's healing people of all their illnesses and weaknesses and areas of sin. He's building them up, showing them that if you follow me, what can happen? Now, all of that has finished between chapters 4, verse 23, and now chapter 9, verse 35, which is powerful because what what comes next? This is chapter 9, verse 35. We just read it. Jesus went around all the towns, villages, and um, teaching in synagogues, proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and curing every disease and illness. Now we move forward. That's the bookend, and this is the rest of today's gospel. What does it say? We seize all the crowds. At the sight of the crowds, his heart was moved with pity for them because they were troubled and abandoned, like sheep without a shepherd. And he sees that, and his heart is moved for them. He knows they they need to be entering into this, and he's been forming these people for a long time now. He sees these massive crowds, and what does he say as he sees all the massive crowds? He's been spending special time with the apostles, the disciples, those who he's calling to send out, and he's preparing them, and he's been doing that from chapter 4, verse 23, up until chapter 9, verse 35. Now, in chapter 36, he sees and he pities all those crowds who need to encounter, that know they have a shepherd who wants to lead them. And he says to his disciples this, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. And what does he do? A chapter later, he officially appoints the apostles as the 12 that he wants to send out in chapter 10 because he knows people need to be sent out. And that's what we pray for every single day. There are people all over the place, everywhere, all over our little town, all over our area, all over our county, all over the world who need to encounter the living God deeper and deeper. I need to encounter him deeper, and that's why I need to have people in my life who are going to be laborers to challenge me. I need, you need people in your life who are going to be laborers to challenge you, but we are all called as Christians to do that. I'm called to it. You're called to it. We're called to go out into the world to share that, and that's what these things are all about. That's what evangelization is all about. We need laborers in the, among the fields to go out and help the harvest. But we can't go around and say, well, I can't do it. Someone else must have to do it. No, it's my job. It's your job. It's every Christian's job. It's every follower of Jesus' job to go out into the world and to share the good news. And so be that laborer today. Yes, we want to pray for more of them. Yes, we want to pray for more priests. Yes, we want to pray for more religious. Those are wonderful things, and we should. And we we prayed at Mass this morning for that thing, as, as Deacon and I did Mass together. But even more so, we want to pray for holy families, for holy marriages. Because where do good religious and holy people come from? Where do good parents come from? Where do good fathers and mothers come from? Where do good uh, priests and sisters and brothers come from? They come from good and holy families. And so let's pray today for good and holy families. Because that's what our church needs, and that's how the harvest will continue to be taken care of. We need laborers in the vineyard, but it can't, we can't expect everybody else around us to do it. If we all take our part and we all be laborers in the vineyard, people will come to know Jesus because we know Jesus. And we're called to help others get there. So that's what we're up to for today. That's my challenge to you all, is to go out into this world and help people to encounter Jesus Christ. It's easiest to do it when we've already encountered him in ourself. So spend some time in prayer today. Win build sin. Allow Jesus to win you over. Let him build you up in your faith today. And then go forward as a laborer in the vineyard being sent by Jesus to help other people encounter him. And I'll ask for the Lord's blessing over you to give you that strength to do it today. May Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
As always, may your cup of joe today be a means of you finding joy this very day. God bless you. We'll see you all soon.